22nd chapter of the story. We will have 10 more weeks in the story after this, but we are now in the New Testament, which means we start with the birth of the king. The king, not like any earth-born king, except Jesus is God born in human flesh. God come to earth. So, you may wonder why Christmas today, but we're celebrating the birth of the king, and we now can see that perhaps a little differently in the context of all that we've learned from the Old Testament and how the people of Israel were waiting, were wanting deliverance, were learning to rely upon God, his beneficence, his provision, yet had wandered away, come back, wandered away, come back. And so it's even appropriate in the season of Lent where our theme is return to the Lord, return to the Lord your God. That we hear this story of how God has come after us. God has pursued us through his son, through his son, born of Mary, born in human flesh. So just announcements will be at the end, but I just want to share one important bit of news with you. Next Sunday, we will be available for in-person worship. We will be here on Sunday morning in the sanctuary and in the parking lot. So we'll turn to coming out Sunday morning to worship with your St. Paul's Church family. With that, we'll begin our worship. Blessed be God the Father, the Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Please pray with me. Called by the mercy of God, we pray, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, from whom no secrets can be hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may more perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. John's get real words, saying, Brothers and sisters, if we say that we have no sin or pretend that sin does not cause harm, we're deceiving ourselves and truth does not in us. But rather, if we embrace this relationship that God makes with us we confess our sins to God God is faithful and just forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness so let us confess before God most merciful God we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves we have sinned against you in thought word and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, and forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I can declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. And even more, to those who believe in Jesus Christ, God gives power to become the children of God, who bestows upon us his Holy Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. For gathering him today with the Christmas theme is a favorite, a little town of Bethlehem. And we hear in the verses of this song, the city waiting, not knowing the miracle that's happening in their midst.
Grace for our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray to the Lord, most gracious God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. After our journey across the history of God's people, we hear today in the first lesson with a greater appreciation of how dark the times have been. Worship of idols and false gods by corrupt kings who led to war and captivity, yet God was always faithful. The readings from the ninth chapter of Isaiah, beginning with verse 1. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will soon be humbled. But there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be filled with glory. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light, a light that will shine in all who live in the land, where death casts its shadow. Israel will again be great, and his people will rejoice, as people rejoice at harvest time. They will shout with joy like warriors dividing the plunder. For God will break the chains that bind his people and the whip that scourges them. Just as he did when he destroyed the army of Midian with Gideon's little band, in that day of peace, battle gear would no long, will no longer be issued. Never again will uniforms be bloodstained by war. All such equipment will be burned. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. These will be his royal titles, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His ever-expanding, peaceful government will never end. He will, not, he will rule forever with fairness and justice from the throne of his ancestor David. The passionate commitment of the Lord Almighty will guarantee this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in response of reading from the first chapter of Luke, from Mary's song. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, because he has visited his, his people and redeemed them. He has sent us a mighty Savior from the royal line of the servant David. Just as he promised through the holy prophets long ago, long we will be saved from our enemies and from all who hate us. He has been merciful to our ancestors by remembering his sacred covenant with them. The covenant he gave to our ancestor Abraham. We have been rescued from our enemies so we can serve God without fear. In holiness and righteousness forever. The Son of God is for, far superior to every creature, in heaven and on earth, for through him they came to be. Yet with wisdom and love for us, we are made in God's image. He humbled himself to relate with us as one like us. The reading is from the first chapter of Hebrews, beginning with verse 1. Long ago, God spoke many times and in many ways to our ancestors through the prophets. But now in these final days, he has spoken to us through his Son, God promised everything to the Son as an inheritance, and through the Son he made the universe and everything in it. The Son reflects God's own glory, and everything about him represents God exactly. He sustains the universe by the mighty power of his command. After he died to cleanse us from the stain of sin, he sat down in the place of honor at the right hand of the majestic God of heaven. This shows that God's Son is far greater than the angels just as the name God gave him is far greater than their names. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Children's sermon. You like cookies and brownies and cake, right? Where do they come from? 
you ever had cookies right off the cookie sheet while they're still warm? Or on the cooling rack? Well, when we buy cookies in the package at the store or brownies, we miss learning about everything that goes into making the brownies or the cookies. But if we make it at home, which is a big project. Well, then we see that there's butter and sugar and eggs and other ingredients that go in. But we might not have all those ingredients in the house when we want to make cookies, but you might have oatmeal for making oatmeal for breakfast and you might have raisins. So you might have the ingredients to make oatmeal raisin cookies. Would that be okay? If that was what you had? What's what was in the house? Hmm. Sometimes we need to settle for what is in the house. The ingredients that we have. The ingredients that we have. So Linda in the church office said she has sent this um, map to you um, and it's a 40 day journey and each day you can mark off or color in one of the squares along the way as we get to Easter. And you could think of this as kind of choosing, a time of choosing the ingredients that go into Holy Week and Easter that make it really good, that make it really good and important. So I, I hope that you're, you're finding this and can take some time to realize along the way there are things that we do want to have on Easter morning, like Easter candy, right? Um, so we plan for those things that we want, those ingredients we want, and we get rid of the things that we that we don't want. So, will you pray with me? Dear Lord Jesus, we give you thanks that in you we find mercy and patience in kindness and we try and be like you Lord we try and be patient and kind and you help us to be kind and friendly and helpful so Lord we thank you that you journey along with us and bring out the best in us. And we look forward, Lord, to Easter morning when you rise from the grave. Amen. Our Linton Gospel Acclamation is returned to the Lord. Let us sing. chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Eight days after Jesus' birth, the baby was circumcised, and he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel even before he was conceived. And when it's time for the purification offering, as required by the law of Moses for the birth of a child, so his parents took him to Jerusalem and to present him to the Lord. The law of the Lord says, if a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So they offered a sacrifice according to what was required in the law of the Lord, either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. 
Now there was a man named Simeon who lived in Jerusalem. He was a righteous man, very devout. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and he eagerly expected the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him into to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord as the law required, Simeon was there. And he took the child in his arms and he praised God saying, Lord, now I can die in peace as you have promised. I have seen the Savior you have given to all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations. He is the glory of your people, Israel. Joseph and Mary were amazed at what was being said about Jesus. Then Simeon blessed them and he said to Mary, this child will be rejected by many in Israel and it will be their undoing. But he will be the greatest joy to many others. Thus, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your very soul. Anna, a prophetess, was there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phenol, of the tribe of Asher. And she was very old. She was a widow. Her husband had died when they'd been married only seven years. She was now 84 years old. She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began to praise God, talking about Jesus to everyone who had been waiting for the promised king to come and to deliver Jerusalem. When Jesus' parents had fulfilled all the requirements of the law of the Lord, they returned home to Nazareth and Galilee. There, Jesus, the child, grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom beyond his years, and God placed his special favor upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. <laughs> story. We know where those words come from, the context. That simple phrase brings to our mind the second most important thing in all of humanity. The original children's action figures were just like these. Pieces of a nativity set. I don't know. You can see this is a shepherd holding a little sheep. But he was there. And Mary and Joseph were there. The baby Jesus was born there in the stable. And the wise men came. Children and old alike can tell that story. We use those action figures to tell the story. It can tell you where the wise men came from where the shepherd came from. Well, they were from the hills of Bethlehem. And Mary and Joseph, though, had come a long distance. They had come from Nazareth. And Mary, great with child, it was quite a difficult trip. So when the innkeeper said those words, there's no room in the inn, you can imagine how it felt for them. What a heartache, and maybe even crying, God, what else? What else? And honestly, many of us have felt that way this last year. How are we going to get through this? What's next? I don't like all these precautions, but I'll do it to keep others safe, to stay safe myself for my family, for my children. 
Well, there's another phrase that even people who kind of want to write off the Christmas story is not relevant or important anymore. Even they might sympathize with this phrase. Stop the earth. I want to get off. Have you heard that before? Stop the world. I want to get off. It's from a stage play back in the 60s. But it's a sentiment I think that we can relate to except well, we want to stop everything around us. We want to get our back on our feet. But leaving the earth? Hmm. Well, you might have missed it, but last week in the news, we heard about the latest Mars rover. Now, this one's big as the predecessor one, almost the size of a car, landing on the planet Mars. And that's quite a deal because this was a soft landing so that nothing would get damaged and it can, can drive around and do its experiments there on the planet. Is that something that, that you noticed? And, you know, it was in the news there. There are actually people trying to figure out how we can get off. I want to get off the world. The name of this latest rover is Perseverance. Well, we're familiar with that word, perseverance. We've persevered this last year. Well, it seems appropriate though for the Mars rover because it's one in a long succession of, of missions to Mars, well, almost over 20 years. The previous rover was named Curiosity because it's about discovering how habitable Mars might be. And interestingly, international competition has kind of fueled our interest in this. Internet articles disclose that NASA plans to spend roughly $2.75 billion on the project over 11 years. This is including 2.2 billion for the development and the building of hardware, the, the rover and, and other things. 243 million for the launch services to get it into space and, and to Mars. 291 million for two and a half years of mission operations. That's the people sitting in mission control operating this remote control device on Mars. Adjusted for inflation, Perseverance, this latest rover, is the sixth most expensive robotic planetary mission, but it's cheaper than its predecessor, Curiosity, partly because they used the same design and even had some parts left over. Well, wow. Maybe you're glad you missed that. Too much information. But just a little bit more I want to share with you. It's just moderately upgraded from Curiosity, the predecessor. This mission carries seven primary payload instruments. You know, they have a drill and drill down in to the ground and take samples. And, and this one is designed to collect some of those samples and leave them in canisters on the surface to be retrieved at a later date. It has 19 cameras, one of them or two are on, a, on an arm, robotic arm, so it can take a picture of itself so that from Earth they can see that everything is fine on the rover. The finish is still good. And there's two microphones. And you wonder what they're listening for. Even carrying a mini helicopter 
Ingenuity is the name of a mini helicopter. And if it's successful, it would be the first flight on another planet. Well, the most spectacular picture I saw was the big parachute opening up as this was descending into the atmosphere after the heat shield had been all hot and burning and they had slowed down. The parachute deployed, but you know, it looked like there's no sky on Mars, but there was air. Parachutes only work where there is air molecules anyway. Well, that's all about, they say, looking for past Martian environments capable of supporting life, seeking possibly microbial life in those environments, preparing for future manned missions. And since Mars is, has some familiar characteristics with Earth, some see it as an escape plan after all of the horrible things that we're doing to destroy this planet. Yet Mars itself seems to have not been nearly as favored by God as our planet home, Earth. Our lesson today is really about its admission to our planet, to come to humanity to help us to be restored and renewed. See, God tells us through his word that he loves his creation and he loves us and he's going to help us to take good care of one another, take good care of this planet. Well, if you weren't watching for it, you might have missed that news about the Mars landing, that cutting edge technology, the costly efforts to discover if there's any hospitability on Mars. In Jesus' arrival, it also seems like, and maybe it was God's plan that it wasn't really noticed by too many people. Now we know in the story around the manger, around Bethlehem, the angels told the shepherds, the shepherds went and saw, found it was just like they were told. And then they left and went and told everybody, anyone who would listen, that the angels had visited them. And they went and found this child, the Messiah. And later the wise men came. Following that star, they had the ancient prophecy of a king that would be born, king of kings, the king of Israel. And a star would mark that. When they saw that star, they got together and started moving, coming to find that baby born king of kings. But even that didn't seem to stick with people. And Mary and Joseph might have been glad to just go about their lives kind of in an ordinary way. To just blend into Jewish society. Yet they couldn't escape the upper story revelation that God had given Simeon. This man who had faithfully been praying to God, asking about when Israel would be delivered. And God had revealed to him that he would not die until he saw the deliverer, he saw the child. So we have his words recorded here in Matthew's, Luke's gospel for us. He eagerly anticipated the Messiah coming to rescue Israel. The spirit led him there that day. All Israel was waiting too. Under the oppressive regime, the oppressive practices of the Roman Empire, nationalist Jews chafed. They wanted their identity, their national 
to be that great people that they knew themselves to be. But here, why is the Roman government oppressing us? Yet, there were those who were more engaged in the relationship with the Lord, like Simeon, the God of their ancestors, that they were able to go about their daily lives, even under the Roman oppression, with hope and joy. I'd like to imagine that that was the lower story of Mary and Joseph's lives up until the time that God caught them up in his upper story plan, his mission to earth to bring the Messiah. There was a wedding being planned. A wedding being planned and then the Gabriel, the messenger angel visited Mary. Greetings, you who are highly favored, the angel said to her. The Lord is with you. Don't be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. Well, we've learned, going through the story, how significant David was, that shepherd king, so closely modeled the way that God wants leaders, government leaders, and one another to care for one another as shepherding, nurturing, guiding, protecting, valuing each and every one. Well, how could she become pregnant outside of the natural way? The angel answered Mary's question. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Joseph, her fiancé, being a just man, when Mary went through that difficult time, and we can only imagine how difficult it was for Mary to tell Joseph, I'm with child, but not the natural way. It's God's doing. Well, Joseph wasn't sure what to do with that. Yet being a just man, he decided to break off the engagement quietly so as not to disgrace Mary publicly. As he considered this, he fell asleep. And an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, reminding Joseph of his connection to David. The angel said to him, Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit, and she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, which means he saves, for he will save his people. From their sins. Well, that connects us to Lent, doesn't it? This 40 days before Jesus' passion, we go to the cross, and we also go beyond it to the resurrection, to the forgiveness of our sins, that new day beyond the death of Jesus, where he has been raised to new life that life that he shares with us in baptism. Well, it's not explicit in Matthew's account, but I would like to imagine that Joseph, after that visit from the angel, had within him the peace that's with beyond understanding. I think he would have needed that. And Mary, on her part, she answered the angel, I am the Lord's servant. May it be unto me as you have said. Now that is trusting God. Now Mary and Joseph, 
today's gospel, arriving in Jerusalem at the temple to do what is required by the law of Moses, the birth of a child, a male child, to make the appropriate sacrifice, to dedicate him to the Lord. And here comes Simeon, who's been on his own journey waiting for the promised Messiah. Simeon comes to them, blesses them, says to Mary, this child will be rejected by many, and that will be their undoing but he will be the greatest joy to many others. Thus, the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your very soul. As we, during Lent, journey towards the cross, looking forward to what lays beyond the resurrection of Jesus, we know Simeon's words are true. The deepest thoughts of many hearts are revealed by how we respond to Jesus and God's act to forgive us our sins, to make that way, even if we don't want to be in a relationship, God has still opened up that way for all who are, will submit, as Mary and Joseph did, to follow God's way, to trust God with all of it, all of our being, all of our soul, all of our heart, all of our mind. As for Mary, a couple times the Gospels tell us that she treasured these things in her heart and he thought about them often. And that benefits us because the only way the Gospel writers knew was Mary telling them about these events, about her lower story experience when she was caught up in God's great plan to bring redemption to all the earth, all of humanity. And Mary was there. There, her son's crucifixion, and I'm sure that must have felt like a sword piercing her soul. Yet God sustained and kept her to see his resurrection also in the new life. Jesus is a king unlike any other earth-born king. His father is our father in heaven. The restoration of God's people, the peace God made with humankind, was not as some imagine a deliverance from any pain or suffering in this world and everything rosy and, and kind. No, God came to be with us, to strengthen us, fortify us for the difficulties of this life that Jesus himself experienced. God stands with us in this truth of God's divine mercy for sinners. We don't need to clean ourselves up before we come to Jesus, but he accepts us as we are, and he loves us too much to leave us broken. He wants to bring healing to our hearts and our minds, our souls, and our bodies. We are equipped by faith with God's love and mercy so that we may lead others away from sin and its corruption to new life. With our Savior. Jesus was not a military leader who would conquer Rome and free Israel from that outside oppression. The end of Rome's empire came because of their own sin and corruption. They were doomed to fail and crumble because they did not stand for truth and on truth, but rather abused the power. Jesus came and set us free from the internal oppression inflicted by our own sins. He who did not sin bore in his body, upon his heart, his soul, the punishment for all of humanity's sin so that we might be set free. Let's pray. 
Dear Lord Jesus, you are our King. Send the Holy Spirit to help us bear the suffering we experience in the world and to bring to the foot of your cross those sins, those griefs, those sorrows that we cannot bear. You were speaking to us when you said, come to me, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give is light. Thank you, Lord, for these words of promise of walking with us in the journey of life, especially in the season of Lent. Help us to leave behind the sin, the brokenness, and fill us with all good things by your grace and mercy. Amen. And now let us sing our hymn of the day, Infant Holy, Infant Lowly. together, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We heard in the message about the expense of the Mars expeditions and that. And, well, I'll leave it to your own thoughts. The expenses that we concern ourselves with our own families. And then, well, the Bible teaches from the first group, the percentage to give for the care of others, for charities, for the work of the church, for sharing the good news of Jesus. And we're grateful that we've been able to continue to do this during this pandemic, during this time, we're glad to open again next week to in-person worship, parking lot worship. And we're grateful for your participation, worshiping with your offering. Let us sing together our offertory today, Create in Me a Clean Heart, O God.
Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we boldly pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Your gift of grace, mighty God, is for all people. Make substantial the faith of the baptized, that we may wholeheartedly follow you. Give new believers joy in your promises. Secure those who suffer for their faith with hope and courage. You alone can give. Hear us, O God. All the ends of your creation worship you from the galaxies to microorganisms. Preserve your creation, Lord. Teach humanity to wonder at the marvels of your works and to join you in stewardship of all entrusted to the care of humanity. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You reign over the nations yet became subject to them to free us from the power of sin. Lord, we ask that you would raise up leaders who will freely work for peace and justice within and among nations. Intervene with your glory to produce solutions to unity that we wouldn't imagine on our own. Hear us, O God. Holy God, in Jesus, you became one with humanity in suffering and death. May all know the depth of your love revealed on the cross. A company we ask those who are suffering in body, mind, and spirit. Restore all who are sick and comfort all who grieve, especially Wadi, Jill, Deb, and all the others whom we hold in our hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Mercy is great. Your vision for us, O oh Lord, is great. You made Abraham and Sarah the ancestors of a multitude of nations. You entrusted Mary and Joseph with your own holy son. Bless grandparents, parents, foster and adoptive parents, parents who have entrusted their children to the work you do in adoptive parents. Hear us, O oh God. We await the day of Christ's coming again in glory. Lead us by the example of all the saints who have taken up their cross and followed you that together we may find our lives in you now and in eternity. Hear us, O God. We trust ourselves in all that we pray to you, our faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are what God has made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you, that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen.
Go in peace. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Well, we've been doing the announcements in this way as part of the recording so that you would have them since you're not receiving a printed bulletin here at church. Here is our uh, directory, those who are serving today. I uh, feel it's important to share that with you as we care for and work together to provide the worship and the care of the church. This is February 28th, 2021. We've been in chapter 22 of the story, Birth of the King. Next Sunday, uh, Jesus' ministry. We move quickly, and this is all time so that we get to Holy Week in the story as well as the church year. So we're, next week, uh, Jesus' ministry, we'll be learning about who Jesus is and what God is doing as he journeys towards the cross along with us. Readings there in Matthew chapters 3 and 4, Mark 1 through 3, Luke chapter 8, and John's Gospel 1 through 4. If you want to read from your own Bible. Who knows how much snow melted this week. So grateful that much of it, and most of it, seems to be just going right into the ground, which just means that the grass is going to come up all the quicker. So we have a deadline on the mowing contract for the churchyard, for the cemetery yard. Um, all that are interested, please be in contact with Shane, the information there, or in your directory that you have at home. Anyone interested, or if you know of someone who might be interested in in taking on this task for us. Um, please pass that along. And our prayer list, again, good to think beyond our own bubble. Grateful for military, those serving overseas, locally, law enforcement, fire crews, first responders, and we have not forgotten those who are at home. And so good to be calling one another, checking in, just having some contact to, to, to talk. As, as the vaccine is rolling out, um, it'll still be a while before we're completely comfortable um, being together in person. Um, and we'll still want to continue the, the precautions as we do that. Um, Jill Gilbert continues to recover from her surgery. I understand that's going well. grateful for medical treatment and uh, to be able to look beyond that, like Easter, look beyond the cross to, to a greater day beyond that. And finally, for our own care, we're overwhelmed, distressed. Uh, these are some resources. I'll continue to, to share this because there may be folks that, that you need to refer them to um, for any variety. Um, added new to this is vaccine.iowa.gov and just coming out this weekend is a new vaccine registration site for the state. I know people who've been persistent uh, with HIV have been able to get vaccines there at HIV in Shenandoah. Um, the county, uh, some have gotten them through the county health department. But it's taken a lot of persistence on a lot of people's parts. So I hope this website, and you know, maybe you're not on the computer, maybe you need to ask someone to do that for you. Um, please do, please do, um, so that we can all be vaccinated and be know that we can be safe around one another again. Since it's the end of the month, we want to recognize the birthdays for February and for. February 5th was Chris Roth, February 6th, Jill Gilbert, uh, February 12th, Ken Salvestad, the 16th of February was Tim Bredenstein and Deb Weiss, on the 27th, Carol Hampton and Tony Comstock, on the 28th, Pastor Kurt Hoover, and on the 29th, if we had a 29th, would be Deb Ratley. Should we sing happy birthday? First. First, First okay. we have some in-person um, 
putting money in the bank is, is um, and grown-ups can do this too. Okay. Since your birthday comes I'm before mine. It's a day before yours. Okay. 25, 50. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'll stop talking. Eight. I'm very young. Yay. Very young. <laughs> and 25, 50, 60, and one, two, three, four, five. Yay. <laughs> On the 27th is Mike and Carol Hamilton's anniversary. Mm -hmm. 